Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this tutorial, we want to you create this parametric table inside Grasshopper. As you can see here, uh, these are based on uh, three sections. So these are the sections I have used here. Uh, I can change the shape. See, that we can change that here. Like this, the line. And the type of lofting, which I'm going to explain. The thickness of the material, the widths, can control that too. And the side count is which is going to create the shape. If I put this nesting to true, you can see that you can also create those parts on the ground inside the sheet and number them to maybe use that for fabrication. So let's get started uh, from scratch and learn this step by step. Okay, let's get started from scratch. Uh, what I want to do here is to draw an arc. So let's start from zero. And for example, draw this arc here. Okay. And uh, I can make a copy of that. For example, for the top part and rotate that 180 degrees. Okay, so if I say loft and connect these two curves together, uh, as you can see here, it's going to make one point at the center. So we have to define a line so it can be converted into a line at the center of the table. So I'm going to say, for example, with a shift key like that. And if I select these three and type DIR, which is direction, you can see that the direction of all of the three has to be in one. So for example, you can see that the seam starts here. This one is here, but this one is in the opposite direction. So we have to change this direction from here. Uh, then we have direction like this for the second one. And for the third one, obviously it's going to be wrong. So what you want to do here is to just click on this one. So the seam is going to be correct and then loft them together. If I loft this, you can see that we have this surface. And uh, what we can do here is to make a contour. This is exactly what we're going to do in Grasshopper. So I'm going to say, I want to start from here. The direction is going to be in the normal direction. And for example, I'm going to start with a distance of contour of two. And now you can see that we have that here. Then what we're going to do here is to offset these curves. For example, the distance is going to be three. in this direction and three in the opposite direction and then we can loft them together to make the strips and then we can extrude them up so we'll have those parts as the final results and then we can nest them at the end of this tutorial so uh, let's go back and uh, have these three curves and start with that one so i'm going to go to the params menu and select geometry curve I think we have to put that to full names. Uh, right click and set multiple curves. The first one, second one, and the third one. Then we can go to surface, exactly what we have done in Rhino. Uh, freeform loft. We will have the surface. And remember that it's completely parametric. The good thing about Grasshopper is that you can change the curves, even scale them, for example, and create different results. You can even scale that in there opposite direction okay after creating the loft you can also use the surface freeform loft option for example the type of connection you can use straight also straight is also a good option if you want to have straight lines as you can see here if i bake it it's going to be a poly line connection so it's completely like that okay for the type, you can, uh, as you can see here, the options are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 5. Uh, if you want to, you can make a number slider from 0 to 5 and give it to that. So let's do this with 0 to 5, and uh, let's name this type. And you can switch between these different types if you want to. I think the maximum is like 3, so I'm going to stick with 3. Okay? And these are different types we can make. Now that we have the loft, 
we have to make the contour. The contour is completely similar to Rhino. Intersect, mathematical, and contour. We want to contour this loft. The starting point is going to be, by default, it's 0, 0, 0, which is on the ground. Uh, if this is, uh, we can give the point to that. So let's go to patterns menu and give a point. Right click and set one point. And if I bring that up or down, it's um, uh, it's going to start the contour from that point. Okay, so if I put it down here and give the direction Z direction and start with a distance, for example, two, it's going to make a contour here. Then it's going to go up by two. Then it's going to make another contour. And then it's going to go up by two. And maybe that contour is going to be uh, from a part of that surface, okay? So remember that you can always control that, or you can right-click here and set one point, and write zero and enter to make it uh, at the zero, zero, zero uh, word uh, coordinate here. Okay, now that we have the direction, the direction by default is zero, zero, one, which means in the Z direction. But if you want to give it a unit Z, you can do that too. The distance is going to be basically the thickness of the material. So I'm going to say thickness here. And as you can see here, I can change the thickness of the material because this is going to be the amount we're going to extrude at the end. Okay, I'm going to turn that off, turn this off, and we will have that here. And obviously changing this number is going to give you different results. And uh, being near the straight line is going to be also possible if you know exactly the height of your. And instead of thickness, maybe you want the number of counts. Obviously, obviously, this is not good because when we want to make this in the real world, we have to give it a thickness. So I think that the thickness is a better option to control it here. Okay, after creating this contour, you can see that the last one has just missed the top part because after giving it like 1.61, it's going to go up and miss the surface so that is going to be the last uh, curve okay now that we have that let's make the curve utility you can use two different uh, ways of uh, making the offset one is uh, let me show you here offset curve and another one is offset curve loose the curve loose is a little bit faster because it doesn't use control points and i prefer to use that if i want really fast results if I give this to here and give the another one offset, normal offset here, you can see it's really slow. And uh, that's going to make the process really slower. So I'm going to say, for example, Pam's menu number, give that to the distance, make another one. This time the distance is going to be minus X because I want to, uh, if you want the widths here, we can say minus X divided by two and x divided by 2 because obviously it's offset with two separate directions. So if I give that here, this is going to be the widths. Uh, we can name that widths. And as you can see here, we can control that easier, okay? Now what we have to do is to connect these together. Again, you can use the surface loft, use the shift key and add it here, and it's going to loft them together. Or you can use the freeform ruled surface, which use curve A and curve B to connect it. You can see it's a little bit faster. So I'm going to stick with ruled surface. If I bake it, you can see that it's going to create those surfaces here. And that's good for start, okay? Now that we have the results, we have to extrude it. So we can go to freeform, extrude, and put it in the Z direction, and give it the amount we have given for the thickness. If we want to have it exactly sitting on each other, we can create this kind of results. If I just select the last created objects and move them here, zoom in you can see that we have this final results which is really cool and we can create that by simply using this simple algorithm uh, another thing we can use here is to make this faster instead of a simple extrude 
So I'm just going to put this up. Uh, we can make this wire display hidden. I'm going to put this up and disable that. So if you want to have NURBS, uh, remember that this is, you can scribble here and we can say NURBS, okay? If you want NURBS, you can use that. But instead we can use another technique. I go to Mesh Utility and make this more controllable by using a mesh surface. Because this is a NURBS surface, uh, we can convert that into a series of UV divisions. Okay, that means the divisions of in this direction, it's uh, either U or V, and another one in this direction. Okay, so because we want to put the widths into one, I'm going to check which one it is. I'm going to give one. Okay, I think it's V because V is going to make it like that. And then we can make this a polygonal output. So example, start with three and go up to maybe 30. So 30, now let's say it's sides count. If I give it a three, obviously it's going to make it like that. And it's really cool because this is also interesting because for example, you can make a table with three sides. Let's move them here and extrude that in right now. See how cool it is? By just defining the division, we can make something like that. So I'm going to, if I increase that, it's going to be completely circle. And if I decrease it, I can make it, for example, four sides, five sides, or whatever we want. Okay, after creating this mesh, a good thing about mesh is really fast. We can extrude it with Pufferfish plugin. I think Pufferfish is really going to be great for this because it has a mesh uh, tools. And another one here is just a simple extrusion. So I'm going to say uh, offset. Sorry, I'm going to use offset here. And if I give this thickness here, the amount we had to the distance, because it used both sides, we can't use that. So I'm going to give a number to the both sides, to distance on both sides, because it's going to offset the both direction and make it minus X again, divided by two to X divided by two to make it completely up and down extrusion. And now we can give that amount here and wire display hidden. So it's like a cleaner output. And uh, let's also give this a display custom preview. Okay. I had to give the thickness here, so I have to connect the thickness to that. And now you can see how fast it is because the contour is really fast, the offset is really fast, and the number of count. Okay. If I bake that, you can see, let's also give it a swatch. Uh, for example, this color, I think it's cool. And also we can use the mesh edges to see the mesh edge and turn this off. Now you can see if I go to rendered mode, so it's something like that. The shaded mode is cool. And that's going to give you an overall shape of the final results. And we can, Decrease the count to maybe three or four, whatever we want. Okay, now that we have made this, I'm just going to finish this tutorial by putting this inside a sheet. You can use the params menu, uh, open nest, and use this open nest plugin. Open nest can be, uh, first of all, you have to pack the objects. So whatever you have, uh, you have to pack them on the ground. And after that, you can use the open nest, okay? So first we pack the geometry on the ground, then we give it to the geometry and then we have to define the sheets. The sheets is really simple. You just have to define a sheet here. Right click extract. And let's give that here. And we're good to go. We have to give the geometry because we want to nest the mesh surfaces. Uh, what we can do here is to either give the mesh to the input 
and we have to define the plane of these meshes. I don't think that if, if I give it a plane, it can't extract the plane here. Instead, I can go and give a plane to that surface. And uh, first of all, we have to flatten it because we want all of them to be done once. And then we can give the uh, plane to the main nerve surface because it can extract the plane easily. And then give that to the plane. You can see that this is the packing on the ground. Don't want to see that. And then it goes to the geometry, something like that. Okay, you can turn this off. The reason I gave the mesh and not the surface is that uh, because, as you can see here, we can get an error here. Uh, you give the, you give either the mesh or you can give the curves of that. If you want the nerves one to work, just give the curves to get the boundary, flatten it, and then give that to the input. It's really going to be slow, so I prefer to work with meshes. You can see it's like three seconds. But if you want that, you can give the curves to that. Or if you want to, the mesh is really faster. And then another thing I always use is the seed. Uh, I can give any number slider to that and change the location. This is going to help you to just nest them on the ground. Another thing you can do is rotations. This is only rotating those sections four times. It means like zero, uh, 45 degrees or something like that. 45 degrees, 90 degrees and so on. So I'm going to increase the rotations. And that is going to give us more freedom on the section's orientation. And as you can see here, I can put them into three. Another thing you can do here is the iteration. So if I give this a number slider and put this to uh, one, iteration by default is one. If I increase that, sometimes it's going to give you better results. So as you can see here, if I increase that, it's not going to change anything, okay? So based on your project, you have to find this number. I think for this one, it's like going to be four. I think uh, four or if I put that, put that to one, two, three, okay. So two is going to be fine forward. So we can have them here and change this number to something with three section, three sheets. Okay, that's it. That's how you can do that for the, uh, numbering, what I can do here is the geometry I have. So this is the geometry. I'm going to go to the mesh, use the mesh edges. This is the sheet output. Uh, there is an interior edge, which is these edges here. And we can pick one of them. So for example, this item one is going to pick up one of these. The good thing about this is that we can select the curve middle and put the numbering on that. So display, text tag 3D, or you can use the open nest text location. You can give that a plane. Just flatten this so you have them all in one. The text you want to type here is the IDs. This one, ID number, sheet ID number. This is the ID number of that. And you can change the size if you want to. So that is going to help you. And for the naked edges, I can use the naked edge and use the curve join to join them together and flatten this so I have all of the curves as an output here. Turn off the mesh and we will have that here. Uh, remember that you can always change the size if you want to. By default I think it's one so we can say one to increase the size. Anyway now that we have the final results this is the default output we can get. Okay, that's about this tutorial. I hope that it's useful. If you have any question, ask below and see you next time. Bye.